Afternoon and welcome to Scorched Earth Tarot. My name is Carrie and this is going to be a reading for Sun, Moon and Ascendant Leos. If you don't know what your Moon or Ascendant signs are, there's a link in the description box uh, to Astrolabe. And if you put your details into there, they will give you a free natal chart and that will tell you what your Moon and uh, Rising signs are, amongst other things, and why it's important for you. Um, if you're a subscriber and returning, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, it means the world to me. If you're not a subscriber, please do consider subscribing because it helps raise the visibility of the channel and I get to I get to see more people than I might do ordinarily. Um, uh, thank you for all of your uh, comments and messages last month. Like it, it genuinely is the highlight of my month reading everything and particularly when you reach out with your personal s stories let me know exactly how the, the reading resonated with you um, it's it's quite humbling and I really enjoy it so it's all good uh, the messaging functionality on YouTube is going to be removed by the end of this month I think if you're watching this in September so if you do want to get in touch the best way is probably through social media and I'm on um, Facebook and Instagram as Scorched Earth Tarot, so you can get in touch with me there. Um, beyond that, I don't think I've got anything else to tell you. I was going to say, cards being very quiet, but then they're just flown out to two of them there, and I'm delighted to see the King of Wands making an appearance, Leo King. I'm actually pretty delighted by all of the cards that are on the table right now, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm just going to pull some clarifiers for them and then I'll let you know what is down and what it means. Wow. Yeah, I'm really loving this. Excellent. I hope you had a, a good August and that you enjoyed your birthdays. I had an amazing birthday, so I'm Leo also. My children absolutely spoilt me rotten and even my daughter yeeting a cardboard box into the TV and smashing it um, didn't spoil my day. It was lovely. September is going to shape up to be a really interesting month for us, Leos. Right. I'm loving this. So, the three main cards that I've pulled, or that have jumped, more accurately, I guess, are the Wheel of Fortune, love to see that, the King of Wands, right in the centre, that's Leo energy, fixed fire, and the High Priestess. This card, legit, has been absolutely stalking me throughout August, so I'm not really surprised to see it there either. I'll go through the clarifiers as we go through the cards in turn, because I'll probably save time doing it that way. So... <clears throat> The Wheel of Fortune is number 10, right? And 10s are about completion, right? They're about completing a cycle. You, Leo, in some way or another, are completing a cycle and the wheel is turning for you. <clears throat> The message of the Wheel of Fortune is that the wheel is always turning and sometimes you're on the upward tra trajectory and sometimes you're coming down and the idea is you take the rough with the smooth, you learn the lessons from the downtime and you enjoy the uptime without getting necessarily attached too much to either. But genuinely this card only seems to ever appear for me to indicate an upward swing and so I'm delighted to see it here. 
because as I've said before, Leo's have had a really shitty time over the last few years, but I think it's been really important for us because we've learned a lot, like probably almost more than any other sign. I think the last few years have been really instrumental, really educational. We've learned about ourselves. We've learned. We've learned to be ourselves in a way that perhaps we have never been at any other point in our life before. And certainly in the last couple of months, I've started to feel like there is um, a recognition of that fact really starting to come through. And the, the, the uh, AFOGs, as my friend calls them, another opportunity for growth, uh, are starting to become further apart, they're spread out more, they're not lasting as long. We're learning the lessons, we're picking them up and we're moving on. And we're aligning ourselves with energy better than we have done. We've stopped fighting for the wrong things. We've stopped fighting to try and keep things static and we've started to ride the waves in the way that we were always supposed to. And here we are with the Wheel of Fortune. We've finished a cycle now. We're starting a new one. And I would say that even if one of the clarifiers for this card wasn't the Fool. But we'll get to that. I just love this card so much. It's, it's utterly beautiful. It was the one card that I'd seen a picture of from this deck that made me want to buy it. It's glorious. It's a card of Sagittarius as well, just in case you have a Sagittarian around you who's important, who may be instrumental in in ushering in this new cycle. But I don't think it's that. I think it's a general a general upswing. And the two cards that we have to clarify that are the Emperor and the Fool. Now the Emperor is the card of Aries, so that's a fellow fire sign. So we've got Sagittarius, Wheel of Fortune, and Aries here, and us, Leo. These may be important people, but they don't necessarily have to be. I feel more like this emperor is, is an energy. If we take these clarifiers, and I, as I'm saying it, I really feel like this is the case. If we take these clarifiers to be the underpinning foundation for the card above, the reason why the card above is here, then I feel like the Emperor denotes our level of self-control now, not just self-control, but control of our circumstances. As, as Leos, we get, for all we're a fire sign, we do get very attached to the status quo. We don't really like change that much because we're fixed signs. and. I mean, the emperor's pretty static. I'm not gonna lie, he's on a stone throne, and and he's he's in armor, but he's got you know red garb all over the top. But there are big mountains behind him. And the emperor, in this sense, says to me, "We have conquered a lot. These mountains behind us are the challenges that we've faced in the last few years. We've conquered them all. We've come through, and we've learned what we needed to learn." And we're still moving forwards, and that's super important. But we're not trying to control everything, right? We're riding the waves. We control what we need to, and that's probably, you know, really basic, boring stuff. But it's also ourselves. Like, we don't feel inclined to have huge, you know, leonine rages about things anymore. We've grown up, we've matured. We've come a little become a little bit more strategic. It's like having the, the grace to accept those things that we can't change. I forget the quote and how it goes, but that's what's coming through my head as I'm uh, as I'm looking at the card. And it's followed up by the fool. And the fool is is new starts. 
and trust and leaps of faith. We have become our own emperors, I feel. We've conquered so much, we've, 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 we've overcome challenges. We've learned about ourselves in the process. And in doing so, so, we've kind of almost come full circle and we're back to the full. You know, we're coming at life with a different mindset now to one that we've had before and it's innocent. There's a lot of trust there because we've learned to trust ourselves, we've learned to trust our intuition, we've learned to trust our ability to overcome we stop being quite so frightened and this is ushering in you know this this jupiter fortune that is in the first card and this is coming in september the next card is the king of wands the king of wands could be could be a leo like us <coughs> it's the masculine presentation of the fire energy so it's very active, it's very bold, it's very dynamic, and it's very us, obviously. But it's also mature. It's also a card of wisdom. Whereas the page and the knights are, you know, they're very, very adventurous and they're gallivant and they're fast and all of these things. Like the King of Wands knows when he needs to be active and he knows when he can take the time to sit down and rest and that's another thing that Leos have never really been very good at is working out when to rest very driven sign but we are prone to sort of turning ourselves inside out becoming workaholics becoming that you know um, that codependent person in the relationship who who has no boundaries and works super hard to make their partner happy without actually taking any time to do it for themselves. And it's clarified by the, the Knight of Pentacles. And the Knight of Pentacles, I think, is the least dramatic knight on the, in the deck. He's, he's not fast. He's not dressed up in quite so much finery as the others. He's very slow and he's methodical and he's thorough. And I find it interesting that I've drawn, I'm drawing a correlation now between the energies of these two court cards because the King of Wands is sat and knowing when to rest and knowing when to spring. And the Knight of Pentacles is about slowing down doing things properly, seeing it from start to finish instead of kind of, you know, losing yourself in a big fiery explosion of excitement to start with and then tailing off because you've got distracted. You know, the Knight of Pentacles doesn't get distracted. The King of Wands really doesn't get distracted. It's the benefit of experience for him. But there's a There's a new start being augured by the cards that we've looked at so far. And part of that is, is the universe stepping in to acknowledge where you are. But part of that is the, the energetic vibrations that Leos are now giving out. And this new start is going to be slow. There's no cards indicating great speed here. And even the King of Wands, who is the pinnacle of the suit, the fire suit, which is fast and dynamic and strong and bold and all other, I'm really drawn to the fact that he sat down, right? This is about using your energy cleverly. It's about not wearing yourself out before you've finished. It's about taking something from, from its inception and seeing it through to its end. Plodding on. The Emperor sat down. The Fool is moving, but he's moving slowly. 
you know, he's not running around. He's about to take a step off a cliff, possibly. But he has a meandering element to him. He's meandering, he's not running, he's not charging. And these kings and these emperors are sat assessing the situation and working out when the best time to employ slow, steady movement forward is going to occur. <clears throat> and the second card that we've got to clarify the King of Wands is the Ace of Swords. And swords are about words and communication and truth and intelligence, intellect. But for me, the Ace of Swords always indicates that lightning moment of realisation, whether that's through somebody saying something to you or you just suddenly having a thought and it changing the way that you perceive things. The Knight of Pentacles is moving towards the Ace of Swords and he's moving slowly, he's moving methodically and he's got this, he's got that pentacle in his hands which is very precious. And he's bringing it to the Ace of Swords feel like in the month of September you're going to get some truth that you've been waiting for and that truth hasn't been forthcoming yet because you weren't ready to hear it. The wheel of fortune's turning, you've grown up, you've matured, you've endured and you've come out the other side and you've come back to this childish innocence, this simplicity which Leos are known for, you know, we want to play actually is what we want to do. You know, we don't mind being strong. We don't mind picking other people up. We don't mind carrying entire families and situations on our back because we know strong enough to do that. But Leos need a bit of downtime too. And we need to just play and we need to just be. And as we've come to the King of Wands, so we have managed <coughs> to, to bridge that gap between the two things. We are now resonating at a different energetic level to where we've ever been before. And that is what is opening us up to receive this truth. And it's gonna come in slowly, but it's very fundamental. I'm gonna pull another card for that because I'd like to know what it's about. Ooh, I'm gonna use this deck here. smoked because the shadow card at the bottom of this deck is now the nine of cups and the shadow card on the bottom of this deck is the nine of cups. Before I go any further the shadow card on this deck is the page of swords. There's a message coming It may not exactly be what you want to hear, but it is what you need to hear, and it is what you are now ready to hear in a way that you never were before. And the three cards that I've pulled here to clarify the Ace of Swords are the Queen of Pentacles, the Four of Cups, and the Ten of Cups. Queen of Pentacles is the feminine embodiment of earth energy. So it could be 
someone who embodies the energy of um, Capricorn, Taurus or Virgo. It could be that this person is who is going to be bringing this truth to you. Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. We go from a knight to the sword of truth, this absolute truth that you've been waiting for, that you haven't been ready to hear yet, to the queen of pentacles. It's funny because I just did the Taurus reading, Taurus reading, and Leo was all over that, like all over it. The King of Wands came up twice, the Six of Wands came up, the, the Strength card came up, and there was just fire, fire, Wands, 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 Wands everywhere. And I find it really interesting that now I'm doing the Leo reading and I'm getting a lot of Earth here. I'm getting this, this sandwiching of the truth by two Earth characters. So take it as it resonates to you. It could be Taurus, Virgo or Capricorn who's bringing this truth to you or it could be that the receiving of this truth enables you to elevate your, your approach to things from the Knight of Pentacles who's moving but moving very slowly to the Queen of Pentacles and the, the female you know, the, the, the feminine energy of, of any given suit is very receptive, like things come to her. This knight is traveling this way to her. This woman knows how to make a home. She's very stable, she's very secure. I'm just noticing that on her throne, for no reason whatsoever, is a goat, goat head there. A goat. I've got a ram head here. Like horned creatures. The Queen of Pentacles controls her environment as well, but she does it in a very soft loving and nurturing way it's like you're rounding off your edges leo it's like you're starting to understand yourself it's starting to understand how you work and you're starting to pull in other energy for yourself because you are attaining this level of mastery now over you as an energetic being and you as you relate to everything else in the world you know energetically or physically You're starting to understand what you want. Like you've been, I think, in the last few years, been operating from a place of knowing what you didn't want. Like the Four of Cups is all about what you don't want, right? Sitting under the Queen of Pentacles came out with the Queen of Queen of Pentacles. You're starting to harness the laws of attraction and make them work for yourself. You know what you don't want. You've always known what you don't want. That's easy. What you're starting to get a handle on now is what you do want and what that looks like to you. And you're putting yourself into a position where you are able to nurture that into existence. You've realized that the power of the lion is not not running after zebra and tearing out their throats. It's about energy management. It's about riding the wave. It's about knowing when you've got the energy to do something, when that spike hits, getting things done and pulling them off. But you're also taking care of yourself. 
you understand how you work now, you understand that you need to employ a level of self-care. You need to you need to have a comfortable home environment for yourself. And slowly and steadily you're pulling that into play too. Like there's a work life balance here. But it's a bit more <clears throat> it's a bit more profound than just going to work, doing your shift, coming home and spending the correct amount of time with your children. It's, it's bigger than that. It's like you're starting to understand your purpose. You're starting to understand why you exist in the form that you do and why you've had to go through the trials and tribulations that you have because you, they've brought you here to this point. And this point feels energetically very strong shimmery almost it brings us to our final card which is the priestess the high priestess in a standard deck it's number two she's a very passive card the high priestess she's all about intuition and knowing I'm sure you pulled Priestess last month as well. And like I said, this card has been... been stalking me around. And she holds all the knowledge. She's emotionally very balanced. But she doesn't give out too much. Like, you know what needs to be said and you know what doesn't need to be said. You're very strongly guided by your intuition. And it's funny because the King of Wands here, he's all about mastering his suit. It's all about knowing when to strike, knowing when to, to, to run after something. But I've also had him referred to as the Shaman of the deck. So in some ways, these two make a very close pair, you know, and, and they're, but they're also very opposite. The King of Wands is bold and dynamic and he likes to get his hands dirty and he gets into the middle of everything when it is appropriate for him to do so. The, the Priestess is all about the internal world. She's all about the knowing and the feeling and all of these things. Like They balance each other out really, really well. <clears throat> and to clarify, We've got the Queen of Cups and we've got the Sun. Now, what was I saying at the beginning about, about balancing out our, our, our need to play? This is the second Leo card. And whereas the Strength card kind of makes my heart sink a little bit when I see it, because for me, that card comes up when it is necessary to draw upon that strength, which has come about as a result of, of crappy situations that we've needed to, to battle through. You know, when I see it come up again, I'm like, here's another battle that we've got to do. The Sun card isn't like that. The Sun card is the other end of the spectrum. It's the play, it's the innocence, it's the joy. That's what I was talking about when I pulled up the Fool. And it's with the Queen of Cups. There's such harmony radiating off this reading everywhere it's just balancing beautifully I think you've lost your fear of being vulnerable Leo you know the Queen of Cups is is, is, is loving it, it, she's all about feelings and emotions and, and that she's, she's very watery she's very deep and she loves unconditionally, sometimes to a fault actually. But when combined with the sun, I feel like it's just the right amount of balance. You know, the, the, the sun is about openness and vulnerability and not being afraid by anything, just as the fool is not afraid of anything because it doesn't occur to them to be 
afraid, they trust. Whatever boundaries and things you've had to put in place, you've done it lovingly. But the walls that you built to keep people out are coming down. You're not, you're not using those anymore. Your heart is open and you're ready to play. And your spiritual evolution has been exponential because of this balance that you've brought in. Even here, you know, it, it's balanced. You've got the four on one side and you've got the ten on the other. What you don't want, what you do want, and the manner in which you will get that task done. This truth that's coming out, this message that will be delivered to you, is just going to further increase your ability to reproduce this harmony wherever you go. You know, even the Emperor and the Fool are in some ways at opposite ends of the spectrum, but creating balance nonetheless. Seeing mastery, trust, mastery, trust. And right at the beginning of all of it, we've got the Wheel of Fortune. <clears throat> the universe is smiling upon your new vibrational position. And it's going to reward it accordingly with your wish fulfillment. Whatever that indicates to you. That could be a person, that could be a circumstance. You know, it's. We've got the two nines here. We were, we've got you absolutely able to create your own Ten of Cups situation. You don't have to wish, you will do. The Wheel of Fortune is going to help you along the way a little bit. What do I want? I mean, this reading in some ways feels really airy fairy. But then it's incredibly profound in a lot of other ways as well. Like Leo has grown up and you've grown up by getting, getting in touch with your inner child, and balancing yourself out and seeing the joy, joy in little things, joy in simple things. There's no fighting here, there's no... There's no sense of Leo now fighting against the universe. There's no fear of, of, of things changing here. It's, it's about continual balance for the Leo now. We These three cards that I've just pulled are the Seven of Swords, Justice and Temperance. Justice, card of balance, Temperance, card of balance and healing. There's a karmic element to justice as well, just as there is to, to the Wheel of Fortune. But the Seven of Swords here, I, I don't feel like it's, it's deceit or betrayal or treachery or anything like that. I think it indicates risk, but more than that, it, indica in it indicates that there is a lack of risk now. Like, whatever risks you, you perceived throughout your life, those things that you were afraid of, they can't hurt you because you have evolved, because you are mature now, because you have done your work. You've done the karmic work that you were here to do. You've paid off your debts. And it's time to go up now. And karma sees it and appreciates the healing that you've done. It's 
possible that the truth here, the truth that you're, you're looking for, is just simply in September, your own acknowledgement of where you are and how much your life has changed for the better at your own hand by doing the hard work and by looking for the balance everywhere. Like this, this is so balanced, it's so harmonious and it's so much more than you're gonna meet a tall, dark, handsome stranger like this, that's bullshit. This is important, it's really important. The Wheel of Fortune is by definition balanced. It has to be balanced to turn, it's there. The Priestess and the King of Wands balance each other out. The Emperor and the Fool balance each other out. The Queen of Cups and the Sun balance each other out. Justice, balance. Temperance, balance. It's beautiful. You've done so much work rebuilding yourself. September's going to be an important month, but it might not be a month where anything really happens. Not yet, but it's starting. And you are able to make, you're able to have a measured response to everything, a well-considered response, a mature response, emotionally mature, but also childlike and innocent and pure. You, you've sloughed off all the muck and the crap that has been following you around for your entire life. It's wonderful. I just don't think there's really anything else to say. I'd really appreciate it if you let me know if it resonated with you. I have to say it resonates with me quite strongly. But other than that, I will see you next month.